Hey everyone, Brian here with DIY Outdoor Life. Today we're gonna to be taking a look at this compact 220 watt solar panel from Renogy. This thing folds up, it's ultra lightweight. I'm gonna show you this panel, compare it to some of the different options on the market and talk about why maybe it's the right panel for you. But with any fair review, I'm also gonna discuss who shouldn't use this panel and uh, what application this panel might not be best for. So, a lot to cover today. Let's get to it. So Renogy has been around for a while. I featured their products on the channel before. Anybody who uh, deals with solar has definitely dealt with Renogy. But their newest generation of products seem like they're very high quality and at a lower price point than the competition. So I definitely wanted to spend some time reviewing some of their stuff and especially this 220 watt portable solar suitcase. Comes in a good case with the owner's manual. I'm gonna throw in that in there for now. I'm gonna be able to put some of the adapters to use this with portable power stations in there. It's a nice oversized case, so uh, you don't have to stuff it in there and tear the seams out to get it in. But the most exciting part of this product is gonna to have to ha uh, require me to take a step back. Let me cover some of the basics that I'm not hearing in other reviews as to why this product might fit perfectly into your solar setup. Um, I actually refer to this as a hybrid portable panel. Now I made that term up, but it becomes very useful for me when breaking these into categories and I hope that it'll help some people out. So when I'm teaching people about solar, whether it's a setup like on an RV or attaching solar to an off-grid cabin, a van, a tiny home, it's helpful to break them down into categories and I don't hear this discussed much. But there's a time and a place for fixed panels. Right up here is a CIGS. I just reviewed this on the channel again, but this is a type of flexible panel that gets permanently attached to something. Now, the other more popular kind of fixed panel would be a glass panel that you'd attach to a roof rack or use with Z brackets to screw down in a permanent application. These panels are great because they're very hard to steal and they're always charging, they're always set up. So whether you're in storage, the campsite, or driving down the road, those solar panels are contributing to the charge of your battery or the battery in a portable power station. Now on the other side of the spectrum is portable panels or mobile panels, and they come in a bunch of different shapes and sizes. There's these super thin style suitcase ones that kind of fold up and lay out. And there's some advantages to those as well, along with disadvantages. They're very easy to use, they're lightweight, they're easy to pack. But the main thing is you can point them towards the sun. So in that case, they're gonna produce more wattage. They're gonna get you more battery charge. Maybe you park in the shade and you can extend with an extension cord your solar panel out in the sun. That's an advantage of portable solar. The disadvantage is gonna be that they are easier to steal. They're very fragile. If you step on one, that's it, they're ruined. Um, and they do wear out quicker. Where some of these fixed panels like glass panels are rated for decades, a lot of the silicone based uh, portable panels are only rated for a few years if you leave them out in direct sunlight. So they're best suited for temporary use, which is how we use it, to supplement our solar. But you wouldn't wanna use a portable panel, you know, 365 days a year. You're better off going with a glass option. But even within portable panels, there's some uh, differentiation as to how they're built, and that's important to understand as well. With portable panels, sometimes you can get a glass style panel, like the fixed style for your roof, that just kind of folds up with a hinge. That's a panel that you could expect to last a really long time. They have high IP ratings, so you can leave them out in the rain, and they work very, very well. The downside there is that they're heavy and they're clunky. A lot of people don't like those because they're hard to store, and they can be a pain to set up and break down. That's the type of portable panel I recommend for, you know, like a seasonal campsite 
where you can find a nice sunny spot to set that up and get great charge. Maybe there's some tree branches over your camper. That's the perfect application for those suitcase style monocrystalline glass panels. On the other side, you have these very thin ones. This is one that I really like from EcoFlow. This is 160 watt. These are the ones that you can throw out in a flash. They're really easy to store. And I like those panels for my short camping trips. They work really well with portable power stations. But that's why I'm referring to this style of Renogy panel as a hybrid, even though I made that term up. It has a plastic ring around it that's similar to the glass fold out panels. So there's a little bit more rigidity. These thin ones can get a little janky. I lean them up against a cooler or I just kind of lay them flat and get whatever I can get out of them. And that's handy. But to have a panel like this Renogy one that has some stability to it, but it's still lightweight and easy to use, this is a situation where you get a little bit of the best of both worlds. So let's set this thing up and I'll tell you a little bit what I'm talking about. The case on zips, it's got a nice zipper that goes around almost the entire case. You can throw this thing away somewhere. And it doesn't take up as much square footage or, you know, uh, square inches as the old style 220 panels. They're getting a much more compact design. It's very, very thin, but here's that plastic barrier with the corner protectors that make it feel a little bit more like a rigid style panel, just way smaller and way lighter. There's these very simple kickstands that come out to point this in a good angle. So we can just set this up. I open those kickstands down and now your panel is set up. That rigidity is really nice. You don't have to lean it on anything. And it has a simple set of MC4 plugs. So we're gonna talk about the connectivity of this panel in a little while. For now, I'm gonna plug it into this small portable power station and uh, start getting some charge. Red to red, black to black, and we're in, and the portable power station is charging. As I said, this panel comes with MC4 connectors. There's gonna be a positive connection and a negative connection. That's industry standard, and that is my preferred connection for all of my solar panels. Every single portable power station on the market has an adapter to connect to the MC4 connectors. So this little Bouge RV power station comes with an Anderson to MC4 adapter. If you don't have yours because you lost it or for some reason yours don't come with it, every manufacturer portable power station includes that adapter to MC4. So there's nothing proprietary, nothing special. There's a lot of great options on Amazon. You know, EcoFlow gives you the XT60i to MC4. That's what they use. Uh, Goal Zero Jackery uses that eight millimeter and Anderson ports like this one. So you'll have the options to connect to whatever you want, and that's a good sign. Now, your portable power stations have charge controllers built into them. So you can just plug this solar panel into any of those portable power stations and get a charge. If you're looking to charge a battery with solar panels, my beginners still get confused here. A solar panel is unregulated. You have to use a charge controller to convert that to be able to charge your battery. You cannot plug a solar panel directly into a battery. With these campers that say solar ready, there's nothing solar ready about them. You have to get that plug, go to a charge controller, and then plug in your solar panel. Some people get confused because there's all-in-one panels on the market. I did videos about these. Those panels just have a charge controller screwed into the side of them. So they're just giving you that product as a bundle and attaching it to the side of your panel. So you have to go solar panel, charge controller, and battery, but your portable power stations have that charge controller built in. That's the difference as to why one gets plugged in directly, one needs an interface. 
So this 220 watt panel, I'll put the uh, specs on the screen, but as a standalone panel for beginners, you can plug this into almost any portable power station on the market. If you have a portable power station, either on the plug or on the bottom, it'll tell you how much voltage the charge controller, the solar can take. A lot of times you see 11 to 60, uh, this panel's gonna fit in all of those. If you do have like a 22 volt limit, and I've seen that on a few power stations, uh, by the book, 23 and a half is over than that, so I'm not gonna tell you to plug it in. You know, uh, sometimes you can be close, but you generally never want to exceed the voltage on your charge controller because it'll either not work or you can smoke it. So uh, it's good to know that as a standalone panel, it's going to pair really well with most of these portable power stations. If you are running to your camper, this thing's going to run really well with a 20 amp charge controller. So to wrap this video up, I think we've covered most of the basics here. I like the panel because it fits in the middle there. It's super portable, but has the feel of a more rigid panel over the super thin portable style. I think a lot of people are gonna like that. So I use it for my power stations. I also supplement the solar charge on my camper when I need it. It seems like a perfect fit. Um, if you're interested in more solar videos, I got a lot coming, so make sure you sign up to the channel, subscribe, whatever it's called, and uh, check out those videos. I have promo codes and links in my description. I'll always try to find you the best price and include that in the video description when you click the drop down menu. Uh, but let me know what you guys think. Uh, what type of solar do you use? Could you envision using this as a supplement to some rooftop solar on your teardrop or square drop? I appreciate you guys watching as always, and I will see you next time. Thank you.